Hello, everybody. <clears throat> so I thought that making some snowflakes would be good. I'm not going to even talk about how I'm catching up and when and whatever because I don't want to jinx it. <laughs> uh, but we are going to do some, I'll show you a few ways of um, doing all kinds of snowflake stuff. Let me get this a little bit darker because it looks like it's just a pinch too bright. There we go. Especially because I'm going to work with a lot of uh, white. So don't forget to thumbs up or like <laughs> how it is. Um, hi Judy, hi Nicole, hi Jesse. So let's go first. Um, I'm going to... I thought that it would be a good idea to kind of explain how to create uh, a snowflake cane and what you should uh, pay attention to. I do have, uh, give me just a minute, I will place the link in the um, um, live chat on with the winter holidays playlist where there's a whole bunch of stuff and they are both um, pre-recorded tutorials as well as uh, former lives and they are quite a bit of uh, snowflake canes as well as um, how to use the snowflake canes on various stuff. Hi Sharon, thank you Nicole. Hi Francis. Hi Ellen. So, when we are talking about a snowflake cane, a snowflake cane is always, and if you have, actually, let me, let me post the, the link to to my complex canes tutorial because on that one I did uh, explain a lot on creating complex canes and uh, a snowflake cane like I explained in that tutorial I am the Kalyana Kaliana Design is the name of my channel. Okay. Hi, Sherry. That's awesome. Did I say hi, Ramona? I didn't. Hi, Ramona. Hi, Chris. So, uh, a snowflake cane will always be a six radial cane. Because it always, a snowflake always has six spokes. And what does that mean? Well, <laughs> thank you, Sherry. Uh, that means, if you remember, and if you didn't watch yet the 101 complex gains, um, it means that we are going to, in order to, to make the whole snowflake, we will have to, let me grab a piece of paper, whatever piece of paper. Actually, let me grab a notebook because it's better seen. I got it out, but for some reason I left it on the floor. Okay. Hi, Darla. And where's my pen? Okay, so when we are talking about a six spoke, six radio, This is pretty much how a six radial cane looks like. Of course, it can be round or it can be actually hexagonal. Now, you're going to ask me, 
well, when do I make it round and when do I make it hexagonal? You make it round when um, you pretty much want, want to just put a slice or two here and there. You don't worry about them uh, properly, you know, aligning with each other. You might have a larger one and a smaller one on top and all that. But if you want your slices to fit perfectly, you make the cane hexagonal because you have to think of a honeycomb exactly the 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 hexagonal stuff works absolutely beautiful and you've seen me using that i don't think i have one here but you've seen me using that uh give me a second and i will bring it up and get it on the oops it's turtle not yurtle in the um, the sea turtle brooches where i made uh, those specific canes that were let me get to right to that point to show how you practically okay let's see the display okay so what you can see here is that when you have this is a hexagonal cane and when you have a hexagonal cane that is when you can place all your oh come on woman hurry up you can place all your slices to perfectly uh like a jigsaw puzzle perfectly align with each other and you get a seamless perfect pattern and you can do that uh, because as i said the snowflake is a hexagonal cane it's a six spoke radius and you can make it as a hexagon not just as a round cane okay let's get back to oops not this one sorry i just clicked on the wrong thing so um hi cindy so what's the other thing that we need to figure out whenever you're talking generally when you start a cane you always start with a triangle all right and when you start with a triangle it can be your triangle repeating several times but when you're talking about um, the snowflake when you're talking about the snowflake your beginning triangle is pretty much not this one i mean and i'm not talking about the, that simplest way of doing a snowflake you just make a round like this and i have one of the tutorials is just doing that you just make a round and you insert three lines of clay like this then you cut in a diagonal on them and you flip this insert another slice of clay here and then these from this it changes to this and then you just triangularize it and there you have your triangle that keeps repeating but if you want to make a little bit more complicated hi angelica hi birdell hi ascara then when you make a more complicated um snowflake cane you practically start your beginning uh, triangle will be half of one of these six triangles this is what you have to create now when you're creating with this specific <laughs> uh the one that you specifically want to do what you have to keep in mind so let's get this triangle and start 
creating it a little bit right what you have to keep in mind number one you will have to put here a um, um, little line a very thin line of uh, clay bonjour Brigitte but uh, make sure that you make it fairly thin because once you reduce this triangle and you double it and you put it back to back to create the bigger triangle what you put here will be doubled in thickness so you don't want it to be too thick okay so pretty much you use whatever you use here you're going to have to use uh, about half of the thickness not really half because usually this spoke is a little bit thicker than these spokes but almost half the thickness of whatever you do here the other thing is do not yes of course you can just you know just slice and put various length of uh, clay here however but um, you'll just get a very simple and uncomplicated cane right one of the best things to do and i showed it in give me a minute i'm going to only show the the beginning give me just a second okay so it would be this one this one has elements so this is the triangle that i started with is this one as you can see right here this is the longest part and this is the shortest part so both sides of my triangle will actually repeat so remember that this will be your longest spoke this will be your shorter spoke but it's easier to duplicate uh, to to cut and stack back to back back on this side because it's easier to work um, an even triangle like this than uh rectangular type i mean diamond type thing it would be very hard to uh, reduce and keep the shape but to reduce a triangle it's much easier so what you have to keep in mind is that your main elements have to be on this side of your tri triangle and that your secondary elements have to be on the shorter side Another thing that makes everything looks much prettier is if you add something here on the shorter, shorter side of the triangle, you know, you can add little rounds, you can add something just here or something, something, because whenever you start putting together the hexagons, uh, that is when you have a lot of more pattern being created by Nicole you can watch it after it's over no problem so another thing do not think that you only have to place straight lines it is true hi Natalia it is true that on regular natural snowflakes you don't really have round lines but on the polymer clay snowflake canes they look pretty and we are not here to make realistic snowflakes because it's pretty much it would be a huge um, undertaking but to show you that's why i got this and you've shown me here before i did it in uh, one of the lives i showed you how to make um these snowflakes how to use on this type of um 
mold a resin with interference mica I still have some mica out here and with uh, glitters because the result is beautiful and you can just you know poke a hole and put a jump ring and make beautiful uh, earrings and you can also make both of them both each of these making two and then put a little bit of um, uh, resin and just glue them back to back so you'll have the pretty snowflake look all the way and the way that I showed it if you don't want to go all the way back your best bet in making these look pretty and not have any kind of issues when it uh, when it's time to cure them place first the interference mica in these just use a very soft uh, paintbrush and place it making sure that you don't have any of the powder pooling in these little recesses and after that pour the UV uh, resin because it makes things much better and the other thing is after you uh, cure it in the lamp take it out and then fl flip it over and put it one more time in to get cured perfectly on the other side as well but do not use any other kind of mica powder only interference mica powder you can use transparent glitter like this one you can use the uh, crystal ice flakes uh, from the ice resin the opal ones because those are transparent so your uv resin will get cured but if you put something that is opaque the light will not be able to go through the resin and the whatever is under those little inclusions is not going to get cured but uh, to show a little bit better what's going on when we I'm going to explain let me grab uh, the needle because here we have a perfect example of what's going on so this one actually has seven spokes it's unnatural and this one has eight well, these are not natural snowflakes we're gonna go only with the <laughs> six-sided ones uh, so as you can see this one your triangle is this is the long side this is the short side so it practically kind of stops here with any kind of elements and you can have some spokes here and you can have some spokes here the same goes with uh, the 12 size is actually you can take it as a six side without any other problems as this one as you can see is just on one I like it would be on the longest part of the triangle just spokes here uh, on this one pretty much the same thing but there are a few elements added here and the same as in the simplest way of making it the cane you can get the bottom the ones very close to the center they will connect pretty much together and they will form like a little uh, star in the middle like a six pointed star in the middle so this is uh, practically what you have to keep in mind that everything that you put on the edges is going to get uh, repeated there are all kinds of brands Jessica the the whole idea is to have it to have the iridescent one uh, the fairy dust uh, if I'm not mistaken Trish has let's see what Trish has on poly clay play glitter I know she has fairy dust. 
glosses. This one work, the ultra fine glitter works pretty good. Uh, I wouldn't use the glass glitter. In the ice enamels, uh, there is the crystal that I was talking about. Let me get to it. This one is this one the ice resin opals opal this one is the one that works uh, so nice this is actually the one that i'm using most of the time when i'm making fake opals and the silver is mm, mm. but i thought that she has fairy dust too hold on so i know i got fairy dust from her she's got a ton of glitters But when it comes to making um, snowflakes with resin, you want your uh, thing to be kind of chunky because you don't want it to be too um, tiny, too powdery because it's not going to, to show. The diamond dust is very good. It makes beautiful the twinklets makes beautiful beautiful snow like things I actually have that one and let's go to my give me a minute I don't have the link to my influencer store here let's go through my channel Okay, just to show you what kind of glitters uh, you should uh, get flakes. That's where I pretty much have most of them. And uh, yes, you can find uh, some. Where's my molds? You can find some uh, snowflake molds in the Amazon influencer store as well I know that I place some there and they should be at towards the end because towards the end I usually put the the seasonal and I have the um, uh, glass ornaments in the coverables there you go here's this oh, actually I think I, I'm not sure if I got this from Amazon or from Trish this is the this specific one that I was showing you but let's look at the uh, this works this shaved ice this is the opal and this shaved ice I'm not sure if I have glitter I don't think I have glitter because I consider the glitter a curse and I don't work too much with glitter honestly so inclusion powder maybe I put some glitter in here I'm not sure impossible no I don't so yeah I, I need to get on that because if I don't use glitter oh yeah I did put glitter yeah never mind never mind we have glitters in my influencer store so and don't use stuff like that because it's not going to and I don't have a lot of glitters it's not going to cure unless you use the casting resin so I don't have the only one that I can see is the stuff here the sampler set would be some of this with the white here I'll, I'll add I'll look I promise I will look for some more and I will add some uh, glitters there alrighty so yeah so uh, let's see uh, the other thing that I wanted to say is that and I started to say is that don't be shy on adding round things and don't be shy on adding uh, gradients, Skinner blends. The only thing that you have to be careful about 
is to actually make the um, the Skinner blend with very little color and pretty much almost like a lining okay so that would be your best thing so if we go by that and we start creating and I'm going to show you yet another uh, trick when I'm going to do my Skinner blend for the little inclusions in the when I create the triangle I'm going to actually use some translucent as well so I'm going to have some translucent that oh no this is the one that I used to clean the machine I'm going to use some translucent right then I'm going to use some white and <coughs> again <coughs> remember I've been telling you don't sweat the oh my god I have to put one one by one or one by two of this color and one by one or one by two of this color and I cannot put more or less just experiment you'll get the hang of colors and how you're supposed to mix now whenever you m put any kind of translucent or pearlescent in a cane you have to think that it has to be kind of like an in-between because of the fact that whenever you're doing the skin and blend and when you're creating the cane because of the mica shift that pearlescent slash metallic is going to be kind of dull because the chances are that as you're reducing your <laughs> your mica uh, particles are going to align with the length of your cane so that when you cut you're going to see the dull side remember the the thing with the mica particles these are the mica particles and when they are aligned like this they are shiny but when they are on the side they are dull so why am I placing here a little bit of white pearl because I want a little bit it's going to look a little bit grayish a very very light gray but it's going to give that snow like effect and I'm not going to put a lot of it all right this is about how much I'm going to put so and one more thing this white is going to go very much into the translucent and white is the most opaque of all colors in polymer clay because the white pigment is super opaque okay so we got this and then I'm, I'm going to add a little bit of blue but not right now because again I want it to be just like a very faint line at the end now let's get to the machine and of course I'm going to hurry it up so rolling 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 and that way I'll be able to keep it a little bit narrow as you know and I've shown you so many times before so I'm just and never roll a log with your fingers because you're going to leave grooves always roll with your palm okay and now I can I'm thinning it out so I can get it through the machine again and I'm going to roll it like this a few times just to hurry up the whole process and actually I'm going to roll it on a much thinner setting so that I'd have more folds all right so 
generally you'll notice that your ends are going to be a little bit wider than your middle and what you want to do here because you don't want to go with them like this because it's going to be too much intrusion is going to go too much in the other color so what you want to do here is a little bit of a fold just to bring it to the same thickness as you have here right and pretty much the same thing on the other end which is not as bad as the other one but still exists and in order to be able to follow the lines better just simply fold the end and then start rolling you'll get much less air pockets if you do that and then you can follow rather have the edges coming in than the middle spilling out because if your middle spills out then it's going the color is going to go too much into the edges okay let me get this off and use this a little bit and then at the next roll I'm going to add a pinch of blue but I want this to be and see how it again wants to come so you can do it before getting it through the machine or you can do it after the way that I showed you so one more roll and then I'm adding the blue and then I'm going to just continue the regular folding on it I don't have a lot of interference from the middle so I can start always careful that you don't trap air bubbles again flatten it flatten it flatten it and now I'm going to add a little bit of blue and I'm choosing a I can choose a turquoise I can use some ultramarine I think I'm gonna go with the turquoise because it's a little bit softer than the ultramarine so let me get it on a thin and see it's fairly thin right now so I'm going to place it on the side where I have the pearl okay and just carve it out oh come on get out of here Yes, you need to talk to your clay otherwise it will otherwise it will not be smart and do nice things. It's like, you know, when you have when you talk the more you talk to your pet, the more it understands you. It's the same with the clay. You have to establish a relationship with it. <laughs> okay. So, let's go again and this time I'm going to just be folding until I'm getting to uh, a wider sheet and then I'm going to get it good for a cylindrical plug so let's get back on the machine thank you Beth okay
now as usual I'm going to create a, a nice and even line hello <laughs> yeah that's a problem if it talks back unless you made a doll with a little talking box inside so I cut this from the bottom and I bring it on the top here just make sure that you align it properly and then I'm going to get the top one and align it on the bottom one here I kind of pulled a little bit on it so now that I have this I am going to roll and always make sure that these stacked slices are very well uh, together because otherwise when you get with them through the machine they're going they might separate in a Y it's like why do we have to go together in there because okay and now we are going to go simply with a uh, with a thin setting and I'm going to go first with a thicker setting and then with a thin setting and if you see any flashes it's not my motor I have underneath the UV lamp and sometimes it thinks that I'm ready to put something in there and flashes. start with the translucent end. I like to make my uh, strips, yeah there's a little bit of contamination here but don't worry because when you start uh, reducing it's going to be so tiny that you won't be able to notice it with the naked eye. Only if you get a magnifying glass and you go like half an inch from it. And nobody's gonna do that on your work, trust me. Okay, and uh, as I was saying, I like to make this uh, a strip very thin, even if it gets much longer, because it gives more uh, delicate definition to the Skinner blend. You don't really see lines like uh, you see when the strip is thicker it is way more delicate and not so abrupt not such an abrupt transition okay so and I want to a little bit press in the middle and then towards the ends just a little bit because I'm going to reduce it in width but I want first to remove the whatever air bubbles might be in there and press and press now out of all of this I can make several different um, contributions to my snowflake and what can I do number one of course I can cut it in half or I can cut it in three or I can cut it in all kinds of stuff but what I'm going to do is number one I'm going to get and it's up to you how you want to create it this is what I'm trying to show you here how to make all kinds of designs and still create pretty snowflake canes 
that are not going to be all the same and I don't want to, to lose because I did a Google search so I can show you differences between the way that the snowflake cane was created and also some examples of how you can place it on stuff. Alright, so the other thing that I want is another one of these. No, I'm going to just cut this in. No, I'm going to have this. And it helps when you cut with the sharp edge of the blade. And then one like this. Okay, dokie. And this can go in half once again. So now, I'm going to make this one part of going to cut it in half and make it part of the remember the triangle maybe I should bring a let me bring a piece of paper here so you can see how the whole process uh, goes so I have the triangle maybe not this big but just to for you to be able to see it so I'm going to get one of these here and I'm going to change them around. I'm just trying to figure out which works the best. And one of these here maybe. We'll see. And then if I want this, I want this one to be a little bit smaller. So I'm going to cut this in half like slicing a cake. can be here and one can be here ideally okay and then I have these and I can actually flatten them making sure they don't get longer much longer but I can actually flatten them uh, one here and then this one I'm not going to flatten it too much going to do this though. I'm going to bring this more triangular-ish. See, I made it in a... And this can go like this a little bit and then have this. This one fell. And then I can place this here let me make it into a semicircle, flatten it up, make it into a semicircle, to have a little bit of a design that goes here in case I want to make it hexagonal. And then here I'm going to place a little bit, you know, like a little slice of white. So, let me make my slice of white. Okay, so what I want to do first, it's, it's the easiest way. I want first to do a, a cylinder that would be pretty much as long as the other ones. And then I'm going to cut it in. not in four but see it's like I'm cutting it in in six and I'm going to have this here right now my next thing is to fill up with translucent 
so my thickness of it right now is this so I'm going to keep slicing strips of translucent that are as tall as the cane is tall right now uh, if you cannot reduce uh, wider canes you can make the whole thing on a smaller scale but I will show you it's not that difficult to reduce a larger cane and one more strip So, I am going to start with this. I start from the corner. So, first I'm going to place... So, this is the tip of the triangle. I'm going to place on the back of it two translucents. The translucent is on the thickest setting. Then, if you look here, there is a, let me bring it right under the camera so I can see better. There is like a triangle thingy here, right? So, I'm going to cut in a diagonal and about this much. And then I'm going to cut another diagonal and then place the edge of this diagonal where this other one stops. And this way I pretty much created a triangle that I'm going to insert. And it's okay if you have stuff hanging out because you can cut it off, you can trim it off. I usually place more than I need and then just trim off whatever's too much okay now i want here some translucent right so i want it here because I need this one to be separated from this one. They are on two different branches of the... And actually, I might get another translucent just to be on the safe side. Because I want this part to, that comes on this branch to be separated from this one that's on this branch. Right? Here we go. I got it here. And I guess I need a little bit more right here. So I'm going to make a little snakelet. And snakelets are always perfect to use for filling. Not even bothering with the blade, I'm just cutting it with my fingernail. Okay, now my next thing here is a triangle here, a translucent triangle here. So let's create a triangle and again diagonal, cut, diagonal, place this on top here, cut, diagonal, because this triangle is a little bit bigger than the one that was here, so we're gonna have it filling this right here, so this here ok 
Okay, and let me trim these that are. Make sure that it's okay on both sides. Let me trim the extra translucent here. And I got a little bit of extra translucent here. Now, what follows? I have to separate this one from this one. So, I need about half. I mean, like two thirds, I think. And I'm going to need a diagonal. That's going to come right here. So I said two thirds, going all the way two thirds. it's going to be on the if you go on my channel and you look at videos and uploads it's going to come up the first in the list so it's easy to find it all right so this one comes here and this one comes here so i need some snakelets here Let me separate these for just for a pinch. So I need some snakelets here to fill up that emptiness. Hi, Renia. I hope so too. It's no fun when you cannot clay. Make sure that you bring it all the way. dropping things always okay and make sure that it goes all the way in all righty now I need more separation here so let's go with a slice all the way okay Then it's going to be this here that obviously needs like a little triangle. So what I'm going to make. Oh yeah, he loves videos. This morning to get rid of, rid of him because he was meowing, squeaking my head off. I had to put on, the, there's a movie on Amazon Prime, The Lion in Your Living Room. If I start playing that thing, he's just... And he even jumps on the a TV table and looks very closely, closely what's getting there, what's happening there. It's, he is something else. Okay, so I said I'm going to make, this is another way of creating little triangle-like fillers. So we need this one here. So I'm going to place it here okay, and make sure that it is and it's going to need some more right here why is that because I need to place this one that goes like this right and then we got one more here so you can see that I need to put fillers all the way to here. And this actually needs to go a little bit. I got it wrong. It's supposed to be like this. Sorry for that, but I still need fillers all the way through here. Okay, so let's make another pinched one. That's going to go in here.
and let's cover all this area and at this point I'm going to do just a little bit of a diagonal cut so that I can fit this in this angle here and that's funny, Elaine. By the way, ladies, in case you didn't know, I am running a sale on the paid tutorials on my website. And yeah, because I keep forgetting to tell you. I was going to tell you yesterday, but you know how bad I am about money and stuff. So if you go on my website let's go back to if you go on my website on Kaliana design you go to store and in the store you look for the two tutorials and there is a, I actually announced it on uh, I hate the new I absolutely hate with a passion the new Facebook I posted a few days ago there you go uh, there is a sale and use the coupon code H capital H O L I 2020 when you are at checkout and you can get if you never visited my my store there's all kinds of stuff and with packages and with four stones and all kinds of things and you can actually go and look because I did uh, in the description I did put quite a bit of a little video clip so you can see how things actually look like when they are done And there are some all kinds of gemstones, as I said, the four gemstones, and there's uh, also some pieces and a couple canes and all kinds of stuff. Anyway, you can go ahead and find them there. Yeah, so let's get back to this. Let's place one more little snake here and then we're gonna have to place the this one here okay so this is the old design I went a little bit bigger but that's fine I'm gonna be just fine so I need to fill this up so I'm just gonna make a snake that I can go in and just fill, fill up stuff and yes I will bring Finnegan so you can see him I have time he does have his Facebook page and I was planning long time ago to start a YouTube channel for him as well but you know how it happened the moment I would get out of one thing and I would start catching up another thing would happen so it's tough and one more here now before adding the sides I before adding the sides make sure that your um, those lines to create the snowflake Hold on, I forgot to turn this back to. Sorry. Yes, that and also that will help uh, too. And also uh, remember that I created a 
uh, post with a donation page for him on my blog. Oh, I didn't tell you. I started to tell you yesterday, but I, I didn't get to tell you. The problems that I've been having, because I created a GoFundMe, okay? So, number one, the thing that I wasn't very happy, this is uh, Finnegan's donation post on my blog. So, getting back to that, because what I'm going to do now is to just make these straight to make sure that these two lines are straight before two sides are straight before I add the clay line so I create a GoFundMe now it says that the withdrawal is going to start a week after the donation okay so, okay so I go in I put all the bank credential they want the routing number the everything so a week goes by, guess what? I get an email from them, oh, unsuccessful withdrawal. Please go and uh, complete your bank information. I'm like, what the heck? I go in and surprise, surprise, the only information that was there, even if, trust me, I know how to put in, in all kinds of information online. The only information that was still left there was the routing number. All right. So I go in, I refill the information, everything, and obviously I do copy paste from my bank's website. I don't input them by hand to say that, oh, maybe I made a mistake. No, I copy and paste. And it says your withdrawal would be rescheduled for next week. Like, okay, next day, because you can set it for daily withdrawal. Next day again, for the next amount, the next donation amount. Oh, withdrawal was unsuccessful. Please update your bank. Like, okay, I go back again, the same thing. Now, three or four uh, times in a row. In the meantime, the first that had bounced and I had... Um, re put in there the same information gets in the bank so I get pissed I'm like you are doing this on purpose just to be able to use people's money for another week so I send an email because they don't have any phone customer service they don't have the only thing that you can do is to send them an email in the meantime, I went on the BBB Better Business Bureau to check if this is something that normally happens or if it's just, you know, happens, sometimes glitches. No, everybody's complaining about that. So I email customer service and I say, you know what, uh, your thing is kind of glitchy just to keep my money some more. And I get... Oh, we are very sorry. We are going to block the withdrawal until this thing is sold. And I'm like, uh, no, don't block the withdrawal. Anyway, <coughs> amazingly, after a few emails back and forth, and I started getting really nasty with them and threatened with not just Better Business Bureau complaint, but suing. Amazingly, within 24 hours, all the donations were in my bank account. There was no more glitch. So I said, if you are not going to to put any kind. So I stopped that GoFundMe campaign and I made uh, Finnegan's a separate campaign on my blog with the donate button and everything. And you can see there because I posted everything that was spent and everything that I received and all that. Anyway, so now that you can see that my two sides are straight... You, you don't want to have, you know, stuff coming out or going, going in before you place this. But as I said, you have to be very careful because if you put this like this, once you double it, it's going to get double thickness. So I'm going to go on with a, like a six on the makings just to be on the safe side. Maybe even a six. No, let's put a six because I don't want it to be too, too thin.
and here you can make a you know like you can use a blue as well but i'm just going to use a white directly now let's use a blue i'm bad <laughs> I don't want it to be very thick. And I might not place it on both sides, so let's go with this. And I'm going to get it again through the pasta machine on a six so these will be together and not very very thick so I'm going to put the blue on the outside and you want to put it not um, getting farther by much than uh, yeah than the last one so the last one would be about here and i here so i want it to get a little bit higher than this so i'm going to place it right here but i'm cutting it above the that little white thing that is here right because i don't want it the spoke to go all the way to the center and the same here so my little snowflake thing comes all the way to here so i want to place my spoke about here and then press real good not to trap air pockets and cut right before the white and now I can start reducing this right and remember whenever you reduce a triangle never press on the middles because you're gonna get a bowed in press on the top and you might have to go back and pull a little bit on the edges so same thing now here i have to go because it's a much longer one but you always have to pull on these edges because they have the tendency to stay behind So one more on the top and then I can cut it. Okay, I'm going to remove all the messed up ends. Now remember what you see now is going to look a little bit different once you manage to bake it because the transparent will be transparent let's see oh there it is let's cut this in half so we got two and a half inches so need one and a quarter Make sure that it is more on one has got a right angle so you got it like this you simply go like this make sure that you make it to fit 
both on the top and on the bottom flip it over to make sure that it's in a good place so now I can get my triangle mounted. it's a little bit soft normally I would let it rest a little bit because I've been manipulating it so much it becomes a little soft and I might get some distortion but that's fine None. normally when you feel it this soft you want to stop and let it rest for like 15 minutes or put it in the fridge for 10 because otherwise you'll have a ton of distortion Now what I'm going to do with this, I'm going to actually go to half a hexagon. If you have problems doing half a hexagon, your best bet is to just reduce the triangle until you can cut it in six. But as I said, don't forget to look in that playlist I, I uh, recommended you because there are several others, there are a couple that are very simple to make and a couple that are more complicated. So you can use any of those other tutorials in the hol winter holidays uh, playlist. And next time we're going to do the uh, poinsettia using these cutters that are actually rose calyx cutters, but they will make beautiful poinsettias. Okay, I think I'm good for six inches. Even removing the ends. Yeah, I'm actually more than six inches. Let's see. Uh, it is way more than six inches. I just got all distracted with the. Oh well. I'm gonna cut six inches. And remember, you don't have to keep it in a hexagon. Only if you want to completely cover something like a Christmas ornament, for example. Okay, so now what I'm going to do, I'm going to pair the other end. always 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 check both ends now um, just as a piece of advice don't go filling the whole thing do half and half because it's much easier to uh, line up these okay so let's line this up other one up and now I can line this up together 
and you see that there's a little bit of air so what you want to do make sure number one that both ends are lined up so what you want to do is you want to go opposite sides of the hexagon even if it's going to make it a little bit in but it's like you were uh, going for a square one only that you have six sides instead of square and no you cannot use the square pairs on a hexagon at least i didn't manage to easily but if you don't need the hexagon then you can simply make this one a rounded one but what i'm going to do now i'm going to reduce it a little bit more so we can see how it would look on a on a something or whatever you want to put it on I'm not gonna keep it too long of course but just a little bit too and as I said it's very very soft so I don't want a ton of deformations oops because it's going to squish when I'm going to cut it too um, always put your cane in the fridge for a little bit before cutting because otherwise it's going to squish no matter of the cane no matter of the shape no matter of the anything okay not this one let's try this one this one doesn't wanna let's go I see it's deforming really bad when I'm trying to cut it but just because it's got the translucent looks grayish it's a little difficult to make out the snowflake properly let me cut another slice but once you bake it and the translucent gets translucenty and if you have different um, snowflake canes uh, that are hexagonal you can cover something up using different slices of uh, let me get it because see because the, the the color of the translucent you cannot see very well the light blue but once it is put on something and baked you're going to be able to see it without a problem you see the the hole but as i said you can create a ton of um, various patterns and models and whatever you want to do with them i'm trying to find something that's a darker okay let's try this there we go you can see much better this I, I still didn't get to the very to a part that's not but I need to I need to leave it and then reduce it some more because I didn't cut all the way to where it's not deformed but this is pretty much how it would look like and as I said you can create and it makes beautiful uh, snowflake effects and two ways that you can place them let's get to the Uh, display capture so that I can show you so you can first uh, you can either use one of these see like here you can use one of these molds and actually make the the flakes and then place them on other color polymer clay uh, you can see like in caters acres see how there's a bead fully covered in uh not a bead the um, christmas decoration fully covered in uh hexagonal snowflake cane slices here's another one but how the way this one is made 
you put one layer and you just place them on uh, translucent and you can see there are different types different uh, snowflake canes and then you cover it with yet another one making sure that you don't put them one on top of the other and that's going to give a lot of depth make sure though that the the second layer is not too thick because otherwise you're gonna have problems seeing through um, I wanted to show you this kind of stuff but it, my back started hurting so I think we might make it later how to do this kind of uh, snowflake canes but see these are very easy and very simple this is the one that one of the ones that I was showing you how to do the easiest way this is the simplest snowflake cane possible and there's something that I wanted to show you so see these are all kinds of snowflake molds um, no, you can make the snowflake canes not with translucent but with a different color and white this one is not a cane this one is just paint i think it's liquid clay but you can make it with other colors and just cut slices and you'll have pretty designs uh, you can make them just with black and white and they will look pretty much like um, lace and by the way susan with the turtle soup beads has a very nice uh, lace cane tutorial as you can see you can make them in all kinds this one is even super simple it's just very miniature miniaturized they are the polymer clay canes for nail art but uh, this is the one that i showed you of mine but as you can see you can put all kinds of stuff this is something that i wanted to show you so this you would do on a um, skinner blend using hexagonalish uh, put together jigsaw puzzle type on uh, and making a, a sheet of it and then placing it over a skinner blend and that makes a beautiful effect so there are many 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 ways that you can make uh, snowflake canes see this one is just one with different little snowflake canes put together and creating a larger cane with tinier snowflakes inside but uh, you can make them more complicated than less complicated it's a bowl covered with that you can do all kinds of stuff and as i said if you go and look at the at the um, what you call it the playlist that i i gave you the link to you will see that there's i think that there's a um, salt and pepper shaky there's all kinds it's a clay inlay so there's a lot of uh, stuff with snowflakes it's even an older one with and also how to do with a gradient this one is the that simple one that's done just with two uh, cuts but it's done on a gradient so i hope you'll have fun trying all kinds of stuff here and i know i need to go and add some of the latest ones to the existing playlist and i shall do that really soon after i lay down for an hour to soothe my back and i will do that but uh, anyway i hope you enjoyed it and please don't forget the sale 
and if you forgot the coupon go to facebook on the kaliana design uh, facebook page and there's a post there that sh says that and i can actually reshare it so that you can find it faster and there we go and don't forget if you want to help with Finnegan I posted the link to his donation page and let me bring Finnegan because I promised he's sleeping him up anyway because he needs to eat I'm very careful for him to get uh, his food at the proper times because he's still healing yes my sweet pea he's such a baby my mama to let you down my mama to let you down and go so you can go sleep somewhere yes and he lost a lot of his mane because of the the type of collar they used to put on pets at the ER hospital. I guess it kind of cut in his mane. And he had the hair coming up in clumps from here, so he lost a lot of his front mane. Yeah, you were sleepy. Okay. I shall see you guys next Sunday, yeah, we go to sleep. He's sleepy, but we have to eat first, okay? And I promised I'll post another video with him eating his tuna puree from tubes. Okay, goodbye everybody.